All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be on this knife. And this video was actually requested by a follower on Instagram, Blade Collector 7 uh, They requested an update video on this knife and a little bit more information on it. And it's one that I decided to do because I really like this knife. It's kind of uh, an important or special knife to me because it's from the first Gradation Cutlery Rendezvous that I went to. Uh, so first of all, what is this knife? This is a Gradation Cutlery number 15 TC Barlow in oil sucker rod wood, and it is a rendezvous special. So if you're not familiar, Gradation Cutlery has a rendezvous or a, a get together every year. It's kind of evolved over the years that I've been there at this point because Queen shut down and no longer has their Queen knife show. It's also kind of a knife show. Uh, but at this time, it was kind of like an open house for Great Eastern Cutlery where you could go and get a tour of the factory and things like that. And they have a special knife each year for the rendezvous. And this was the knife for that year. Now, a TC Barlow was the first knife that I got from Great Eastern Cutlery. So even before I had decided that I was going to collect these rendezvous specials, which I do now, and I do have videos on all these knives and more information on the rendezvous. I actually have a couple articles on the rendezvous, so check those out at knifethoughts.com or search in my channel here for the other videos on the other rendezvous specials. But before I even decided to collect these, I wanted I decided to get this rendezvous special because I like the TC Barlows. I got to meet Charlie Campagna who orders or, or is the uh, special factory order. Um, dealer for these knives and it was just a really great experience and since then I've gone to every rendezvous uh, so far that they've had since then they have it each year in August and with everything going on in the world I I think and, and really hope that uh, they'll be able to hold the rendezvous this year in 2020 and uh, I'll be able to go again but this was the first rendezvous that I went to in 2014 and you can see of these rendezvous specials, they made 30 knives. And this was the first time that Charlie Campagna gave the okay or, you know, whatever you want to say on a TC not being a special factory order for him. Now, since then, Gradation Cutlery made the, I believe, 2017, it could have been 2018, uh, Blade Forums forum knife, and that was a TC Barlow. That's the largest run of TC Barlow's, I believe, so far. But this was the first time that Charlie gave the okay to make a TC Barlow not as a special factory order for him directly. And I knew it was a special knife. Another reason that I really wanted it is these oil sucker rodwood handles. So oil sucker rodwood is a really historic material. Gradation Cutlery is in Titusville, Pennsylvania, where the first commercial oil well was drilled, the Drake well. And my dad is in the oil and gas industry and I grew up hearing all kinds of history, uh, historical stories and history about the oil industry in Pennsylvania. And the sucker rod wood is wood that's taken from reclaimed sucker rods. Apparently there's just a whole bunch of them lying around in Titusville. And the sucker rod is what basically pulls the oil up out of the well. Uh, they don't use wood anymore obviously uh, they use different things but in the early days of the industry they used wood and it's a really cool material because it has kind of a greenish color now they don't know for sure what wood species it is but from everyone I've talked to including my dad in the industry it's likely that it's ash and it's taken on this kind of really cool green color because that's the color of oil in the northwestern Pennsylvania area or northern Pennsylvania area. So it really ties to the history of the region and uh, I really appreciate that. It's part of why I like Great Eastern Cutlery because they do tie back to the vintage knives and uh, some of their knives are named after you know figures from the history of the area. So that was another reason I, want, I really was excited about this knife. And then finally, and this is the main reason that, that Blade Collector 7 on Instagram uh, requested this video, I believe, is that this is a one-arm Barlow. So the one-arm Barlow is 
an interesting thing. You hear on forums and things like that, it said that the reason that this blade design was created was because after the Civil War, there were so many people who had had limbs amputated because of injuries that they needed to figure a way to make a knife openable with one hand. And if you're familiar with modern knives, you know that that feature, opening the knife with one hand, is something that is considered to have been a pretty late invention. Uh, some people attribute it to Sal Glesser of Spyderco with adding the hole rather than just a dent, which was actually his first uh, intention was to add a uh, divot in the blade. But that is really when, in the <clears throat> mid to late 1980s, is when one hand opening became started to become uh, widespread on knives. So if it was true that this design was created to uh, help you know, people with amputated limbs after the Civil War, that would make it a, you know, hundred and some years before the, the widespread introduction of one hand opening on knives. So that could be the case. Interestingly, and I'm, as I mentioned earlier, interested in history, not just local, but in general, there have been times where technologies and specifically uh, tool technologies like the bow and arrow, I'm reading a book uh, right now on, on the subject, have been created or invented, the technologies, and then have been lost, basically. And it's possible that that happened here. Maybe there just wasn't enough need for two hand, or I'm sorry, one hand opening knives, because at that time it was much more socially acceptable and, you know, maybe easier to carry a fixed blade all the time, which would make the need for a one hand opening knife as a pocket knife less, you know, widespread. But it's also possible, and I think probably likely, that that was not the reason for the introduction of this design. Uh, another reason why the one arm, or all what it's sometimes called a razor blade design, could have come into use is because in its more common form, it looks like a straight razor. Now, some straight razors have a design where the edge, which is straight, comes to a point and then it's rounded and there's actually a protrusion at the top of the spine or this at the spine of the knife. Now, I'm not as versed on straight razors or shaving razors as I am on traditional pocket knives. I don't know if that feature was included on some straight razors so that it could be open with one hand or not. Uh, my assumption is that it just makes it a safer knife because the protrusion makes it less likely that you'll have a poke or you know a cut that you don't mean to do, which is very important when you're using a straight razor. Uh, so, like I say, I'm not an expert on, on straight razors, but it seems likely to me that that design was originally made so that the knife didn't have a point, so that it was safer to use for shaving. And then that was realized that, one, it was safer, so a lot of knives like the sheep foot and other straight edge knives, one of their the reasons that people give for their widespread use is because they're safer. You can't or are less likely to accidentally stab something when you're cutting. So for people working on boats is often one of the uh, situations where people say, you know, a sheet foot or straight edge knife is good. Or for working with livestock, things like that. And I think that that is probably more where this razor blade shape came from in its more common and traditional uh, actual design. <clears throat> now, it very well could be that once people realized that that little bump at the end of the blade could be used to snag the blade on a pocket, that they started to use it that way. I wouldn't be surprised by that at all. But one of the biggest things with traditional vintage 
one arm or razor blade knives, and they are, I think, more commonly called razor blade knives, is that they don't work that well. The bump or the protrusion at the spine is often so rounded that it can be difficult to catch it on the blade, uh, uh, catch the blade on your pocket, which is how this works. Basically, you know, you can imagine that my finger is the edge of my pocket or, you know, really any other fabric. You just catch it and pull the handle back, opening the blade. And it's uh, relatively effective on, on this knife, but on knives with a more traditional or, or more like most of the vintage razor bladed pocket knives I see, the protrusion is rounded enough that it's more difficult. And I have had some from other companies, Queen, uh, and they just didn't work as well as this. So this one arm or razor blade shape is much more practical for its intended use, whether that use is what the blade was originally designed for, like some claim for you know the people who had their limbs amputated because of the Civil War, or if it was just something that evolved because of other blade shapes that had other uh, characteristics that made them desirable, like the safety of having a less pointed uh, tip and having this bump at the end. But either way, the older designs didn't work as well, but this design actually works really well. I can't really show you how easy it is to open on my pocket because of my setup here, but it's actually really easy. As long as you can get it out of your pocket, you can just snag it on you know, the, the hem of your pants, I, I guess not the hem, um, the outside hem, whatever that's called, or your pocket, your back pocket, whatever you need to, your uh, belt loops, I've done it on that. Whatever you need to snag it on, it's pretty easy because this protrudes so, so much. It has a kind of a sharp protrusion. Now, that's really, from, from what I've read and, and talking with, with him, because the engineer, the, the designer at Gradation Cutlery, Randy, really wanted it to work. He wanted this knife to be practical, something that you could really open with one hand. And I don't want to mess any stories up, but at least someone had said that, uh, I think it might have been Lyle Fry had someone in his family who, who used a knife like this because they actually did have only one hand. Uh, so it came from both just an intention to make the knife work well and possibly, and again, I don't want to get anything, any stories incorrect, especially if it involves someone's family members, but I think there were actual practical reasons why they wanted the knife to be able to be really open with this. And so it does work really well. But on the other hand, there are downsides to that also. And that's one of the main questions that Blade Collector 7 had for me here is, is this uncomfortable in carry? I'll say it can be, but it also cannot be. What I mean by that is if you carry this in your back pocket and you sit down on it, it can definitely be uncomfortable. I normally do carry knives, uh, traditional knives in my back pocket and I pretty much stopped carrying this one in the back, my back pocket before I stopped carrying it pretty much all together because it, it could stick in kind of, you know, to your, your skin. So that's, that's not what you want and it can be uncomfortable. But if you carry this knife in your watch pocket, it actually doesn't really stick into you. And the reason for that is because it'll stay up and down. This butt is lower than this point and it, it really isn't gonna stick into you too much. It also fits in most of my watch pockets or fifth pockets on my jeans because the 15 isn't a huge knife. It's about 3.5 inches. So even if it's kind of uh, canted like this, it usually fits in the uh, watch pocket of my jeans. And being canted actually makes it a little less likely to stick into you. So you can, if you carry it in your watch pocket, it can be much more comfortable. Now, another option is to carry it in a slip. These are some collector knife slips that I have. And they're really nice, by the way. And one thing, if you put the, the blade in, you can get it out by squeezing the slip. Now, if you couldn't, you know, depending on what kind of slip you have, if you couldn't get the knife out with one hand, 
it could defeat the purpose of the one hand opening. Uh, the other thing with doing that is, you know, you kind of have to catch it as it comes out, which I think can be difficult. So I think the more practical, if you are focused on being able to open, open it with one hand, option is to carry it in your watch pocket. Now, the other thing about this point is that it actually is pointy enough that it can not only poke into you, but it actually could poke into another knife. Um, now, this is only an issue if you are dumb enough like I was to carry all your knives loose, unprotected in a cloth bag. This is actually another Rendezvous Special from 2015, so the next year. And this knife actually has brass bolsters. And like I said, for a while, I was carrying all of my knives in a cloth sack. And it's not a smart thing to do, you shouldn't do that. But at the time I believed in using all your knives and not keeping them if you don't use them, which is why I sold a lot of knives that I wish I still had. But this knife actually has a divot and I'm not 100% sure because I didn't see it happen. But judging by the size, and where it is and how this fits pretty perfectly into there, I really think that that happened from this. So if you are going to get a knife with the one arm blade, don't carry it loose in a cloth sack with your other knives. Hopefully you weren't planning to, but just be aware that it can do that. Now, they haven't made these 15s with the one arm blade since 2014, uh, but they did make a farm and field, what they called the calf pen in, I'm forgetting what year they made it, but they did make it with a one arm blade. They also made an 85, I believe, a while back with one arm blade, but the most recent knife to have been made by Grady's Cutlery with this one arm blade is the calf pen, which is on the 35 frame, the same as the Churchill, and has a large one-arm blade and also a Warncliffe. It also has a liner lock on one of the blades. I think that it's on the Warncliffe. I haven't had one yet. I should get one to review, but I just haven't. And that's probably going to be your best bet and cheapest option for getting a knife with this one arm blade. These TCs don't come up super often. Well, I've actually only once, I think, seen one of these Rendezvous specials sell. And the person had been looking for one for a long, long time. But the normal TCs with the one arm blade, or even the normal 15s with the one arm blade, don't come up very often. So it'll be tough to find, and if you do, it'll be pretty high prices on the secondary market, most likely. You can actually still find the calf pens on the primary market at dealers. So if you're looking for one of these one-arm blades, I would probably give that one a try. It's an unusual looking knife, but I think it's a practical knife. So check that out, and uh, that'll probably be the easiest way to get one of these. Now, I hope I gave enough background info on this knife and my thoughts on using it. One last thing that I will say on using it is that another thing that, that was improved by Randy about the design here is that it has more of a usable tip. Now, because of this bump up on the spine, it's not like you can, you know, I don't know, drill a hole or something. Probably shouldn't be doing that anyway, but you can use this tip somewhat. Uh, so that's another nice thing, whereas a lot of other one-arm or razor blade uh, pocket knives, the tip is almost non-existent. So this does give you a little bit more usable tip than you typically see on a vintage example of the razor blade shape. I do like it for use. I haven't seen a whole lot of 
uh, practical downside to having this. Like I said, you can't do maybe like if you were, I don't know, gonna cut a bottle in half or something like that. Like recently my wife and I were painting and I cut a couple sparkling water bottles in half for, for putting paint in and you might not have been able to do that as well with this knife. But there's not a whole, whole lot of down, practical downside. Um, so I think that's that's another good improvement that was made on this knife is that you can use the, the edge. Uh, so overall, I think it's an interesting nod to a historical part of the knife market. They have definitely, there have been knives made with the razor or one arm blade for a long time. Whether or not they came into use or this blade shape came into use because of the Civil War and people losing limbs, I don't know and to be honest, I doubt. I haven't seen any primary evidence as in ads from that time period saying, hey, sorry, you got your arm blown off by a cannonball. This knife still works for you. Uh, if anybody has primary examples of that, I would love to see them and be wrong because that would be an unbelievably interesting piece of, of knife and general history. But I haven't seen any, so I am somewhat skeptical of that. I think it's more likely that it evolved from the other aspects of the blade shape. But it's still a really cool, another example of how Grayson Cutlery is willing to look back at historical knife pat patterns and styles and reproduce them in a way that even sometimes improves on them. So I really enjoy this knife. It not only is a knife that I think is a, a good knife from a practical standpoint, but also, like I said, it has sentimental value to me from being uh, the knife that I got at the first rendezvous. And I hope that that answers all the questions. I hope that it's insightful for you. And if you have anything that you would particularly like me to do videos on, go ahead and you know, leave suggestions in the comments. I can't guarantee that I'm gonna do them all. I don't have every knife that GEC has made or anything like that, but I'm happy to, you know, take requests and, and do what I can with them. Now, uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do like it and subscribe to my channel. You can hit the bell for notifications when I post new videos and check out my Instagram and pretty much all other social media at Knife Thoughts. And as always, don't forget to go out and do good.